beautiful song. What a beautiful song of surrender. And that song goes right along with today's message. I want to thank Vivian for reading that scripture. The Lord put it on my heart to ask her to read that. And so I'm sure that in your time of reflection, God has been speaking to you about that text. Amen. Amen. I want to thank my husband and the United Methodist Women's Committee for allowing me to encourage you all today. As we think about the theme for today, we are remembering the past, embracing the present, and transforming the future. Before I even knew the theme of today's service, the Lord had already revealed to me the woman that we were to celebrate today. And if you were to look at what she was called, you wouldn't think it was a celebration. But today I want you to know that this woman was bold. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood. Amen. Well, at least that's what they called her before she encountered Jesus. Amen. That's the word right there. Yes. I don't know how many of you have been called some things, <laughs> named some things, <laughs> and have attached yourselves to some identities. Oh my I'm talking about myself right now. Come on, okay. Come on. How many of us have even named ourselves? Well, yeah based on our past, based on what happened to us. And now we're living out an identity that is not true to what God calls us. And so even though she was called a woman with the issue of blood, today we call her daughter. Today we call her daughter, because that's what Jesus did. Again, this was a bold woman. And I want you guys to know that it took so much courage for her to get to, to her new identity. Yeah. So I want us to just kind of look at how that happened in the scriptures. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if I had to give this a title, I would call it Enough is Enough. <laughs> Somebody should get excited right now. Yeah. Because sometimes you get to a place in your life where you just have to say, Enough is Enough. that you have the courage and the boldness to declare when the season is up. Yes. All right. Enough yeah. is just enough. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that when you go home, everything will be changed. Right. <laughs> that doesn't mean that when you go back to your job, it's going to look different. Right. But what we're talking about is the inner work that we want God to do in us. Yes. We're talking about our hands being lifted up yes. in a place of surrender yes. where we can receive the change from God. And so in your room, I walk into, now that room has to shift because I'm there. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. My situation and my circumstance might not be any different. My bank account might not look any different. My kids might not act any different. But when I walk into a room, Thought of when you created me, God. 
God, use me as your canvas today, oh God. Allow me to paint a picture for your people that is so clear, God. A picture that is, is a reflection of your likeness and your image, God. Allow your people to open their eyes to see who, you, who they really are. God, we thank you so much for your glory, for your presence in this place. God, we worship you, we adore you. We declare that nobody else is like you. We lift up your holy name. For God, you are worthy to be praised. You are a powerful God. You are an omnipotent God. You provide for us, God. You are a friend to us, O oh Lord. And today we come to you for answers, God. We come for correction today, O oh Lord. That we would open up our eyes and what we see from now on will be your image and your likeness, God. It's in Jesus' precious mighty and holy name we pray. The people of God said amen. Amen. I'm crazy enough to believe that God is going to do a miracle in this place today. I believe that God is just so powerful that he can open your eyes to who he thought about when he created you. Who he knew about before he met you in your mother's womb. And I don't know about you, but this word touches me personally. Because for years, I identified myself in a specific way. And it wasn't until I was able to surrender that and to let go of that identity that I was able to then receive God as my father. And to realize that I was never fatherless. I've always been his daughter. And so this woman in the text is very dear to my heart because I can relate to her. Can you guys relate to that? Yes. Can you relate to living out an identity, to attaching yourself to something that happened to you, or something that did, didn't happen to you, and then living that out? Well, I believe that today God is going to open your eyes, and I invite you to wait with expectation for that. Point number one is that she was renamed. If we look at the text in Mark chapter 5, verses 27 to 28, it says that when she heard about Jesus, she had come up behind him in the crowd, who touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. And as soon as she touched the hem of his garment, the Bible says that she was healed immediately. I want to take a moment to talk to you about a woman who was sick and tired. <clears throat> the text tells us that she had been sick for 12 whole years. I can imagine that after being sick and suffering for 12 whole years, that she had been tired, that she had been weary, that she had been frustrated, and that she had been ready for change. The Bible also tells us that she spent all of her energy and all of her money to become healed, but none of it worked. How many of you have ever put all of your energy in tr to trying to change the situation? Yeah. Only to find out that it didn't work. Yeah. How many of you have given your all, all that you could give, but it still didn't change? But how many of us know that when we're able to connect our faith with God's hand, that is when the change happens. Yeah. And that is what we see in the text. According to Levitical law, not only was she tired, sick, weary, and worried, <clears throat> according to the law, she was considered unclean. How many of you have ever been considered unclean? She was not allowed in the temple for religious ceremonies where her healing could have taken place. And anyone who even touched her would have been considered unclean. <clears throat> Can any of you relate to just being Sick and Outcast. Feeling like you don't belong. I'm so glad I go to a church called Camp from Memorial United Methodist Church. That when I walk in the door, I'm accepted no matter who I am. Yeah. And that's not a cliche, that's real. That's real. And so we look at the text and we almost want to feel sorry for her. This is a woman who has an issue who had money, who had energy, who had time. She tried everything she could to be healed, only to find out that it couldn't work. But as we talk about her being renamed, we have to look at what she decided to do when opportunity came her way. 
The text tells us that Jesus was just minding his business. He was headed on a whole different mission, but he was passing through her town. The crowds were following him, surrounding him. She could barely get to him. But she was a woman that said, I see healing in the place. I see an opportunity that I've never seen before. I've gone to all the doctors. I've spent all my money. I tried to change it on my own, but it didn't work. But how many of us know that when Jesus steps in the room, that everything we need steps in the room? And so this woman was bold, Miss Barbara. She was so bold that she was willing to work her way through the crowd, touching everyone else even though she was considered unclean. And everybody else that she touched was going to become unclean according to the law. But I'm so glad we live under the law, the law of grace. I'm so glad that the grace of God will overshadow the Levitical law anyway. And I'm going to press my way into the crowd. I'm going to press my way through all the people and all the doubts and all the fears and all the confusion and all the hopelessness. And I'm going to make my way to the one who can heal me. Yeah. Yeah. And I can only imagine how she felt. She had to muster up everything she had in her. All of the little faith that she had left in her. After going to all the doctors and spending all her money and being an outcast in the city, she still had to make up in her mind that enough is enough. Yeah. Somebody say enough is enough. enough is enough. She had to make her way through the crowd. She had to fight her way through some adversity. And when she finally got to Jesus, she didn't even get a chance to say, hey Jesus, I need some healing. Hey Jesus, can you lay your hands on me? All she did was she used a little bit of faith that she had. And she said, if I can just touch not even his garment, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. How powerful is the hem of his garment? Aren't you all glad that because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, that we don't have to go through a priest to talk to our Jesus? Aren't you all glad that because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, that we're able to be reconciled unto our Father, that we can go to him in prayer right now, and we can ask God for what he needs? And so I believe that this text is a direct demonstration to allow us to remember the power that we have, the access that we have to our Father, that we are able to go to our Father in heaven for anything that we need. We don't have to go through a person. You don't even have to fight yourself through a crowd of people. But what you do have to fight through is the fear, the doubt, the what will they think about me when I come to the altar? The what will they think about me if I go after my dream? The what will they say about me? What will they name me if I do something different that nobody in my family has ever done? What if I quit my job and start my business? What will they say about me? What if I do something that nobody else around me has ever done? What will I look like to them? But how many of us know that your, your, your legacy does not start or stop with your family? You are the one that is to carry the legacy on. And so you are called to do something that nobody else in your family has ever done. You are called to press your way through the doubts and the fears. You are called to press your, press your way through all of the things that are limiting you from becoming your true identity and accepting who it is that God has really called you to be. Really? You don't need permission from anybody else. God has given you all gifts. He has given you all talents. And nobody can stop those things from coming to pass. The, the number one person that stops us is ourselves. The one with the issue of blood could have easily said, oh, there's too many people in the way. I'll catch you next time. She could have easily said, oh, no, this is not my season. This is not my day. He's on the way to heal someone else. But what I love about her is that she saw and she recognized the glory of God. Yes. <laughs> she was in anticipation yes. of what Jesus could do for her. Yes, yes. And I believe that because her faith touched his hand, well, she yes. was healed. Yes. It says immediately she was healed. And in Mark 5, 34, Jesus said to her, and here is where she was renamed, Jesus said, daughter, your faith has healed you. You mean to tell me that it wasn't Jesus and him that healed her? No. no. Uh, okay, because the text says, the text says that her faith healed her. So you can go up in the room where Jesus is. But if your faith is not where it needs to be, you won't be healed. Jesus is walking 
named me from fatherless to daughter. I lived my whole life identifying with the fact that my father wasn't here. I don't know if anybody can relate to that. But see, here's the thing. Even after Jesus renamed her, right, she still had to live her life. Okay, can we get real? Even after you come to the altar, you give it up to God. You receive his healing. You got to walk out those doors and you have to go back to work. You have to go back to your house. You have to go back and live your life. And so even though we are renamed, what we're really looking for is wholeness. See, it wasn't until I understood the concept of wholeness in Christ that I was able to accept a new identity. When he said that your, your faith has made you whole, or your faith has made you healed, he said, go and suffer no more. He said, go and suffer no more. See, I had to make a decision. I had to choose not to suffer. You can choose to live out a false identity for the rest of your life. That will be your choice. But when God heals you, he gives you an opportunity to walk out your wholeness. That's where point number two comes in. I am reclaimed. See, I have to go back and reclaim my true identity. I was attached to an orphan spirit. I was attached, and, and, I, and I, I lived my life. I, I looked for love in all the wrong places. I, I used it as an excuse, right, to live around. Oh, because I didn't grow up with the father. Amazing mother, but my father wasn't there. And so I, I used that, and it became a part of who I was. And one day I said to myself, see, if I don't fix this, then my sons, they're going to reap that. Yes. If the one with the issue of blood had not pressed her way through the crowd that day, if she had not gone and, and received the healing of the Lord, if she had not attached her faith to his hand, then it is a great chance that not only could she have lived her life out with that same issue and that same suffering, that she could have possibly passed that on to the people around her. Yes. So how many of us know that as we think about our legacy and as we think about transforming our futures, remembering the past. It's not that we throw it out with the back, the baby out with the back water. It's that we remember that these things happen to us, but they are not who we are. Yes. Yes. What happened to me is not my identity. Yes. It is just what happened to me. Yes. I will never forget, I was doing an interview um, in Atlanta about a year ago with a, a powerful woman of God named Tara Carissa. We did the interview and it was amazing. We talked about purpose, we talked about destiny. And at the end, we're in the elevator. This woman wrecks my whole life. Let me tell you what she said to me. She said, it was never supposed to be a fair tale. I need somebody to catch that today. The expectation that I had, it was never supposed to be a fairy tale. Oh, I know you watch the Cosby and you watch Fresh Prince, and, and you watch all these shows, and you show up to school, and, and, and there's a mother and a father with all your friends, but you don't have, it was never supposed to be a fairy tale. And I don't know if we have any counselors in the building, but accept this. If you can accept that what happened is just what happened, but it is not who I am, oh my goodness, you open up the doors for God to trans. It's just what happened. And if we are going to walk in wholeness, which means we're going to walk out what God did, we're going to, we're going to act out based on who God now calls us. Right? We're going to move forward, not based on the past, yeah. but looking forward to the future. If I can shift my mind and allow God to transform my mind by, the, by renewing it through his word, then I can begin to walk out a new identity. Yeah. Yeah. It was never supposed to be 
a fairy tale. It's just what happened. And when I, I accept that, then I can move on. And I can do what Jesus said to her. I can go on and suffer no more. Will it come back up? Yes. But when it comes back up, I stop and I declare and I decree that I am healed. I am whole. I am a daughter of God. He is my father. I am the head and not the tail. You will be tested over and over and over again based on what God has done in your life. But it is our choice of whether we are going to continue to suffer or not. And I know that's a tough word. It's a tough word. It's a very, very tough word. I'll never forget when I was studying this text a few years ago, the Lord revealed to me that if the woman with the issue of blood was carrying her issue with her, and she had to press her way through the crowd, she's carrying her issue with her. She's pressing her way through the crowd. She's carrying her issue with her. She's pressing her way through the crowd. She's carrying her issue with her. She's pressing her way through the crowd, but she's carrying her issue with her. You're pressing your way through the crowd, but you're carrying your issue with you. You're still pressing your way through the crowd, but you're carrying your issue with you. In order for her to touch the hem of her garment, she had to let go. that are keeping you from living out the fullness of who God has created you to be? Are you willing to let go of the doubts and the fears that are stifling your destiny in order to receive your true identity? I know this is a tough word, y'all, but I've lived this thing, and I'm still living it out. And I'm telling you that it is possible to receive a new identity in Christ. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. It doesn't matter how many times you say, that's just how I am and I'm not changing. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't matter how set you are in your ways. It doesn't matter. There is always another realm of truth that God wants to reveal to you about who you are. As an artist, before I paint on the canvas, I have an idea of what I'm going to do. I don't have maybe the fullness of it all, but I just go stroke by stroke. Sometimes I don't even draw anything, I just, I just go. Can you imagine that God created you with the same mindset? Oh, let me, let me, let me add this to her. Oh, there's a problem that I need solved um, in Australia, so let me, let me add this to him. There is some missions work over in Kenya, so let me let me add this to her. There is a fabulous boy who's going to need him. Let me let me put let me put that on him. Can you just imagine that, despite all of your circumstances, despite all of your situations, despite all of the things that have been tragic that happened in your life, that God knew you before he formed you. Yes. He knew you. He is the greatest artist. He had an idea about you. And what happens? Life happens. Right? Like the one with the issue of blood. She didn't ask to, she didn't ask to suffer for 12 years. It happened to her. But when she came up on the opportunity to be healed. She realized that something could be different in her life. And so she carried her issue with her. She pressed her way through the crowd. She dropped it. And then she touched yes. the hem of his body. Yes. That's a good place to just clap and give God. I 
I don't want this to be a situation where you hear this word and you say, you know what, maybe I can relate to that in some way. And maybe I can give up some of who I am to, to accept who I really am. Um, that was a really nice, cute word. That was, that was great, that was awesome. I might buy the CD. <laughs> I don't want it to be that. I want you to allow God to rename you. Amen. I'm serious about this. Because I know the power of it. I know the sacrifice that it's going to take for you to allow your Father in heaven to rename you. I know what that's going to take. I want you to experience walking that new name out. Which is, that's where the wholeness and the reclaiming of the identity happens. And then last but not least, her legacy remains. As we work diligently on the 100 year celebration for Camper Memorial United Methodist Church, what we're really celebrating is legacy. Legacy deals with your story. What do you want your story to be when you're gone? Don't you want to leave a legacy that reflects back to the goodness of God? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's what I want. All the other stuff is great. But if when I leave this earth, if I have not put the kingdom in my sons, yeah. right? If I have not been the best wife I can be, if I have not been the best daughter that I can be, it means nothing to me. All the other stuff is great. But we are called to a, to a work, an amazing work. We are called to a kingdom work. But how would I walk that out as an orphan? Mm. How can I fully walk out my calling as a fatherless girl? I can't. Mm. And so when you think about your healing, and when you think about pressing through that crowd, and when you think about touching the hem of Jesus' garment, you've got to know that it's attached to your legacy. All of the previous pastors of Camper, all of the families that have gone through Camper, all of the ministry that has taken place at Camper, could you imagine if you all had given up? Then I literally would not be standing here today. Well, and so this thing is serious. This is beyond the status quo. We are literally here upholding a legacy, which is just, for the sake of conversation today, it's a story. We are continuing a story that's about to hit 100 years old. How incredible is that? And so it's worth it for us to continue to figure out who we are. And guess what? Last year's camera is not this year's camera. I want you to look around. I want you to just look around. The story continues to change. The story continues to grow. And the more that we have the millennials and the young people involved in what we're doing, then that's when we're carrying on the legacy. Right? And that's what it's all about. So it's about allowing God to rename us. It's about allowing God to reclaim our identity. And it's about allowing our legacy to remain. Amen. I want somebody to just say enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's just enough. enough. As I was praying last night and I finished up, I said, okay, God, you know, how do I really drive this home? And as I close, I want to leave you with this. I don't want to be stuck in yesterday's story. Mm -hmm. I can't afford it because my children are dependent on me and their children are dependent on me so who's dependent on you to figure out the real you your true identity and allow God to grow upon that and to build upon who you are today. I don't want to be stuck 
And yes, the story. Mm -hmm. I'm done.